DNA is packaged into structures called chromatin, chromosomes, and chromatids. And we want to define the difference between these three different DNA-containing structures. You see at upper left a DNA double helix. That double helix is being wrapped around groups of histones. And as it's wrapped around these histone proteins, it is called a nucleosome. These histones are special proteins because they have positive charges. In other words, they're alkaline. Those positive charges screen off the negative charges that are found in the surface of DNA. Recall that DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. It's an acid because it's donated a proton. It's donated a positively charged hydrogen ion. Now it has a negative charge left behind. All those negative charges would repel one another if we didn't have the positive charges in the histone proteins to screen those out. And that is the first step in packing up the DNA into a form that we need. Those histones in groups with the DNA double helix wrapped around them and a single DNA molecule wrapped around it are called nucleosomes. Then those nucleosomes with the linker DNA that holds them together are called chromatin. Chromatin fiber is packed into larger structures, packed even further. By the time we get it completely packed, one continuous DNA molecule has formed a chromatid which is one arm of a chromosome. So chromatin is a single DNA strand. Chromosomes are the visible packaging of DNA and histones into more or less X-shaped structures. Some look more like the letter Y, the Y chromosome being a good example. Some look more like the letter X, the X chromosome being a good example. But all the chromosomes have something that looks more or less like an X with either longer or stubbier arms on them. Then chromatids are the two identical halves of the chromosome that are joined together at the centromere. So the centromere is that point at which the mitotic spindle that we saw in module four when we were looking at cell division, the mitotic spindle attaches here at the centromere and tears the two chromatids apart. The mitotic spindle of a dividing human cell is reconstructed here in its full beauty from multiple optical sections that were recorded with a fluorescent microscope. Microtubules are stained in green, DNA is stained in blue, and the kinetochores, where microtubules attach to the DNA, are stained in pink. Each one of those chromatids is one continuous DNA molecule. So recall in module three, we looked at the size of that DNA molecule. It's an incredibly large structure. Just to give you an idea of this size, the largest human chromosome, human chromosome one, contains 247 million base pairs of DNA. So it's a continuous double helix with 247 million rungs of a ladder inside of it. To give you a sense of the scale, if you were to read off one of these bases a second, A, C, G, T, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, just to read the bases on that one chromosome, that one continuous double helical strand of DNA in chromosome one of your human DNA, 247 million base pairs, if you read them off 
one a second, it would take you almost eight years to complete that task. That's not even counting the other 22 chromosomes in each cell of your body that are being read off continuously all the time. You see what a huge job the job of molecular biology is for each of our cells.